Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Masters of the Universe. It's based on the action figures that later became a TV series back in the 80s, which was called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Eventually, this was the live action movie that came out in 1987 for the studio Canon Film, so he had a hard time getting an actual action film to be released in theaters but it became a huge flop at the box office so eventually it didn't do so well but on the plus side it doesn't stop there from, from this um, underrated film from that time anyway it stars Dolph Lundgren as He-Man Frank Langella as Skeletor along with Courtney Cox Billy Barfty Chelsea Fields Robert Duncan McNeil and Meg Foster and it's directed by Gary Goddard. The movie begins on planet Internia, the evil Skeletor played by Frank Langella in his sinister performance along with his army of darkness had taken over Castle Grayskull, a mysterious castle and he imprisoned the sorceress of Grayskull so Skeletor's plan was to drain all of the sorceress powers as he bids to claim the powers of Grayskull and becomes the master of the universe. Meanwhile, Marty Warrior himself, He-Man, played none other than Dolph Lundgren, who happens to be the most powerful man in the universe, with his companions, the loyal soldier Man at Arms, and his daughter Tila who basically saved a dwarf and banner named Gwildor, who actually finds himself on Earth by Gwildor's creation, the Cosmic Key, which is like a synthesizer device that can open to portals that lead to any part of the galaxy in which Skeletor requires in his goal for a universal conquest. But when the Cosmic Key takes in possession by Julie Winston, who's played by Courtney Cox, and her boyfriend Kevin both of them are unaware that on earth it's becoming a battleground as Skeletor and his mercenaries arrive to stop He-Man and his game in order to get the cosmic key we also learn to find out that Julie Winston is working at a fast food restaurant and she's living alone without her parents since they were killed in a plane crash and basically we get a cop finds out about what's going on in the schools that's been an explosion from from Skeletor's mercenaries that were going after Julie who has the cosmic key so as they go in pursuit of He-Man and his companions who are also searching for it so they can go back and return it to Internia and defeat Skeletor from his own game now for a movie like this I didn't think it wasn't that bad as it turned out to be. In fact, I thought it was a decent, it was very well made as it turned out. Because while Dolph Lundgren may not be the best choice for it, but at this rate, I thought he was good in this movie nevertheless as He-Man. But I have to say the real performance out there had to be Frank Langella, who played Skeletor in a much sinister and menacing kind of way that I would never thought he would pull this performance really off. I mean he totally stole entire scenes in this movie to make a very good villain right there. And you know what? This was definitely an Oscar worthy performance if you think about it. So I had to agree with everybody there that he did an awesome job playing that role. As well as the rest of the cast, they did a very good job too. Courtney Cox was very beautiful at the time. You know, she was very popular since she was in that Bruce Springsteen's music video, Dancer in the Dark. And then, of course, which eventually she went on to do a lot of TV appearances, such as Family Ties. And then, of course, went on to become very famous for TV shows such as Friends and Cougar Town. And, of course, have been on in many movies, you know, as the years went by. 
So she was very good in this one. Um, also, uh, Chelsea Fields, who has been in many films, including Skin Deep, was very amazing as Tila, as well as uh, Meg Foster as Evil Lynn. And all the rest of the cast was just perfect. It was definitely the kind of movie you would definitely watch when you have too much time on your hands. And not to mention another good performance by James Tolkien, uh, who's best known for his role in Back to the Future to play a cop. And I thought he was very good in this one too. So I owe it all to him. So as far as this movie went, it may not be the greatest movie I ever made, nor it's the worst. I've seen a lot of cheesy movies like this before such as Flash Gordon. It sort of has that feel of Flash Gordon, which I do like too. So I could take it for granted. I'm, I think it's right up there because there were so many warrior movies like that before. Besides Flash Gordon, there was Conan, Beastmaster, Sword and the Sorcerer. Yeah, we had so many of that. Also, the special effects in this movie it was actually very high tech at the time, comparing to what we're getting nowadays. But this movie was very high tech for its standards back then. And I'd rather take that over any cheesy CGI special effects any day. While it does look cheesy, but it doesn't look that bad. Because there's a lot of flashy, vibrant color lights shooting all over your face. Almost in every single scene you see. Mostly the, the sword fight scene between He-Man and Skeletor. Yeah. I only wish Dolph Lundgren managed to get the line I have the power! line all around. <laughs> because, yeah, I think he needs to work on that. But, it happened in 87, so you can't go wrong. But anyway, if you're a big fan of movies like this, or at this rate, a big fan of the TV series or even the action figures this is definitely for you but keep this in mind you might be a little disappointed that it isn't as good as the TV series once was but that's okay because I really enjoyed it nevertheless I love the TV series I love the toys I would definitely love this because <laughs> it's better than having to deal with a lot of crap nowadays so anyway, I'm giving Masters of the Universe free stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.